What makes the new style reports in Xero different to the old reports? Well, it's all about the flexibility, the changes that you can make to the new style reports to make them the way that you want them, the format, the layouts that you want. Let's head into Xero and take a look at that flexibility in the new Xero reports. Okay, time to look at new reports and the added flexibility that you have with them. So we've just looked at age receivables and the old style. Now let's look at it on the new style and we're going to choose the summary report. We know it's new style because it says new here. Let's select it and let's take a look. And it's all about getting familiar with what you can and what you can't do with the reporting in Xero. So first of all, we have a date range. It defaults to today's date. You can change that. You can change to the end of last month, last quarter, last financial year, or you can choose a specific custom, a date of your choice. We'll change it to the end of last month. And again, if we make changes here, we need to choose this update. Okay, what else can we do? Let's move on to the actual report. And if you hover over the name, you can see this appears. It's not there. Go to the name, move over. It's in blue and you can edit the title. I'll just put my initials at the end of it so we know we've done something. And that's the title updated. Let's continue hovering. What else can we do on this report? I can click on this contact name because it's blue. You can see it's in alphabetical order. If I click again, it's in reverse alphabetical order. What else can I do when I'm moving along? There's nothing happening. And the totals, again, I can change the order. So there's lowest to highest, might make sense, might not. Let's go back to sorting the alphabetical order by contact. Okay, what else can we do? This is where a lot of the magic happens. Up at the top right, we can click on report settings. The date range we've already spoken about because we chose it. The age and periods, you've got four periods. Do you want more or less than that? And what's the size of periods that you want? One month and four periods sounds fine. Do you want to show decimals in your numbers? Yes or no. Layout, you can have standard or you can group it or summarize it. And then let's go to the columns. So these are the columns that appear if you wanted to add Another column, if you wanted to add an email or a phone number, you can do that. If you don't want a total or if you don't want contact, you can add and remove columns as you want. Then again, we would update. So once we update, we can now see what the report will look like. And here's something else you can do. If you hover in that email, you can actually move it. So if you want the columns in a different order, these you wouldn't want to change because it wouldn't make sense but you might want phone then email or email then phone. Let's go back into the report settings. Let's change the layout and let's choose group by. What do you want to group it by? So let's say region and update. Now what we can see doesn't make an awful lot of sense on this report, but there you have regions. So there's no regions for these contacts. Then this contact is in the South region and this one is in Southwest coast. So if you thought actually, I've chosen that, but I don't like it. You go back and you change it to standard. Other option in the layout, you can summarize by. What can, do you want to summarize it by? Again, we'll choose region and update. So now what we have, we have totals. So we have summarized by totals for no region, south region and southwest. Again, we're going to say in this actual report that doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to choose standard. What else can I do? There's the tracking. If you only want one region, you can say I want my region to be, untick them all, and we know there wasn't anything for east side, we'll say south, and update. So each time you select update from the report settings, you will see on the screen what your report is going to look like. You can go back into report settings as often as you like, and make changes. I've updated, so I'm back to including everything. Back into report settings, 
add a filter what will that let us do well you can see the contact and then you can say all or you could only select the contacts that you are interested in again update when you add a filter your filter will be shown here so you know when you run this report it's not a report for the whole business it's only for the contacts ABC Bankwest and basket case Clicking on that arrow there, just remove that information from the top and sent it to the bottom. Do that again and it's back at the top of your report. As before, you can save your reports, you can export them, you can print them, you can do what you want. That's a bit of the flexibility on a new report. But what you need to be aware of, if we go back to reports and we go back into this report, it's back to where it started. It has defaults and it takes you back to the defaults. If you go back into settings and make changes, they're not saved unless you want to save them and they become a custom report, which we'll look at in another lesson. Okay, let's take a look at another new style report. So accounting reports, we'll stay on the sales section. We'll choose more. And this time we're going to choose receivable invoice detail and we can see it's new style defaults to this month and it's a demo company so there's actually nothing there let's change it to the month before so last month and update good news we did actually have some sales the month before again we can change some sort orders now you might find they don't always work because this has been sorted at this stage by invoice number we can move columns around so we can have the item code before the reference move it back if you want to there are set headings, but as before, we can change them and we change them by going into our report settings here. So you just need to look through the columns, see what's available and see what you want. There's a huge choice on here. Be sensible with your choices, include on your report what's important. We're looking on this report at the details on sales invoices for a month. So depending on why we're running this report, what do we want to see on it? What do we need to know? Make changes. Let me choose something that I think is important. I'll choose the VAT rate and I'll update. Clicking on update lets me see what's on the screen and I move over. We can see that the VAT rate is now there. If I want it somewhere else, I can move it. So as you can see into report settings, there's a huge amount of flexibility. We've already spoken about grouping by. At this stage, it's grouped by invoice number. Let me just close that and show you. So here you've got an invoice number one by one. If we go back in here and if we say we don't want this grouped, change it to standard, update. So looking at the report now, previously it was subtotaled by invoice number. Now it's one list. We could change the order to invoice date or the order that we are interested in for this report. It's quite a big report, there's a lot of columns. We're looking at the discount, we think actually, we don't need that on this report. So we'll go back into report settings, find it, and they're in alphabetical order, this list. So we go to discount, remove that tick and update. So now if we look at the report carefully, we can see that the discount column has been removed. We might say we don't need the source because we know that's a credit note, we know that's an invoice. So we go back in, find the source, untick and update. So you can see the flexibility. One more time, look at report settings and just to discuss the layout here, you've got three options. If you choose standard, it'll simply give you a list of your sales invoices. If you choose group by, it's going to give you subtotal. So group by by a sales account or do you want to group it by reference for your invoices so invoice number that's what it started off as or do you want to summarize summarize is going to give you total so if we summarize by and again this lists in alphabetical order summarize by invoice number and update okay so what you find now is there's a summary so it's a whole of an invoice so you don't have the same detail. So that's giving you subtotals with a total at the end. If we didn't want that, straight back in there and move it back to standard. Any changes, as always, update.
So hopefully you can appreciate the amount of flexibility that you have on zero new reports and you'll go and play around with them, find what works for you. As always, you can save them and you can export them the same as you can with old style reports. That's zero, the flexibility in the new reports. If you like my videos, please let me know that you like them. Add some comments below, I will do my best to respond to them. And why don't you subscribe to the channel so you can get notified when my new videos are uploaded on a regular basis. Until next time, happy zeroing. <laughs>